Thank you for listening to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. We are ready to talk some football. It's a week away from the NFL draft, and you guys know I wasn't not going to do a video for this. I had to come on and talk about the first round. I respect Mel Kuyper, so I'm going to use his picks, the April 10th mock draft that he did, and I'm going to talk about it. Talk about each team, the picks that they make, and I'll let you guys know. I'm going to talk about what I think about the pick, and I'm going to talk about the state of each team. And I'm going to let you know if that team is in a good spot right now or if they don't know what the hell they're doing. So before I start, I want to wish my subscribers a very, very farewell day. I want to make sure you guys are doing good. And I hope that we can get more subscribers in here before the regular season, because you guys know I'm 50 plus percent every year and picking the games. That's not changing. And I think this year might be our best because I have a new way to attack all these picks. And we ended the season seven and oh, so it, it's I think it's going to be really good. But that'll be for September. For right now, we got to talk about these teams getting better so we know what we're talking about when it comes to making those picks. But the first thing I want to say, too, before I get into the first pick with the Bears, and this is funny because I don't know if you guys have seen it. This is just real life talk here that I want to throw out. Like when I go to events or when I go to the mall or whatever, I see a lot of people, a lot of guys copying Pat Mahomes haircut. And it's like I don't normally like think about things like that, but I'm just like because I watch football and Pat Mahomes says that curly fade. There's so many people like do they go, do they go into a barber shop and say give me the Pat Mahomes give me that it, it's usually younger guys in their their early twenties late teens but wow it's weird like just because he's a player like he's one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen he's on all these subway commercials State Farm whatever and you, you I mean I'm cool with being myself making myself try to be normal and whatever. I'll be damned if I'm going to copy somebody else's haircut, especially just because he's famous. It's weird. That's all I'm going to say. You guys know why they do that? Let me know. Are they starstruck? Do they think it's going to help them get pussy? I don't know, but it's a good, it's just a thing. It, it kind of goes back into what I always bring up and you guys laugh at it, but like when Stefan Diggs and Dwayne Wade wear like tight purple pants, where they show their butt cheeks and they're walking around. Like, it's like, dude, like, all right, like, what are you doing? Like, you don't you want to look cool instead of, like, weird? Do you play for the pink team or the blue team? I'm just trying to figure this out here. And that gets into our first-round pick, Bears, Caleb Williams, quarterback out of USC. Technically, it makes sense, but let's just go right down the line here in my concerns. My first concern is what I was just talking about. Pink lipstick, pink fingernails. What is up with that? Are you a drag queen? If you are, let us know now. There's a lot of Christian Catholics that play in the NFL. When DJ Moore bends over in the locker room and you're wearing blue or pink fingernail polish and you're like looking, you know, I mean, I would be a little bit weirded out by that. I'm just saying. I mean, it would bother me a little bit. It's not my fault that, you know, most of the NFL is Christian Catholic. I grew up Christian Catholic. So it's, you know, it is what it is. But, it, I mean, I would just feel better if Caleb Williams said, look, I'm doing this to lower the guard of the women because I'm going to try to act feminine so I can get more women. And then, you know, you do your thing with the women. Okay, cool. I'm like, I'd be like, all right, you know, it's a G move. I mean, you know, you want to play it like that and you want to get that. Okay. Cause the more the merrier, but I don't really feel like it's that he might be a drag queen and that's weird, but the other issues come into play with me with the bears and Caleb Williams. First of all, Caleb Williams has the Zach Wilson syndrome in terms of as a prospect because Zach Willis, anytime Zach Wilson played a good team, he failed. And it kind of seems like Caleb Williams, anytime that he had to play a team that was a little bit better, in crunch time, he failed. And that's a problem for me. Because if you choke that, like Dak Prescott, that's something that you can't coach. Like you can coach to get a, a quarterback better in the pocket. You can do certain things. But Caleb Williams, man, if you're going to choke in prime time, then you're not built for the NFL. So I do think that Caleb Williams could be a bust. And then it gets into the other part where he's not walking into a great situation. Now, I know the Bears have another first-round pick. They can put a weapon around him. I get that. But they bring in Keenan Allen. He's going to get hurt right away. The offensive line's not very good. The running core, running back core has not been very good. The defensive side, 
in the front seven has not been very good. Tremaine Edmonds is one of the dumbest fucking players that have ever played in this league. And they overpaid for him because, oh, we think we're getting a star from a playoff team. That's how simple-minded the front office for the Bears is. Their strong suit on that team is their secondary, if anything. But Caleb Williams is walking into a bad situation, and he's got a lot of question marks. And it just kind of feels like the Bears are going to do what everyone's telling them to do. And, oh, because Caleb, oh, Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this year's draft. Oh, we're just going to take him with the number one pick. Have fun, because you know what? You're going to have fun losing. Next team, number two, Commanders, Jaden Daniels, quarterback, LSU. This makes sense. I actually think that Jaden Daniels and Drake May are going to be the top quarterbacks in this year's draft class. And Caleb Williams and J.J. McCarthy are going to fade, and they're going to be the busts. But the only concern that I have with Jaden Daniels, because he's got a good-sized frame, he can run, he can throw, he's got the deep ball. The only thing that worries me about him is the situation he's walking into. Bad offensive line. Not a particularly good run game. Honestly, I mean, even if they draft a receiver later here in the first round or in the second round, whatever, if they trade or do something, it's still not going to make a difference because Terry McLaurin is pretty much all you have. So you're just going to have Jaden Daniels come in here and you're hoping that he's going to be this great guy that can make people better. But the problem is, is that you haven't put the right pieces there to begin with anyway. So, oh, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be the commanders like the Bears overcompensating for a quarterback and not having the players in place. Same thing with the Patriots at three. I sound redundant, but these teams don't draft well. They don't know what the hell they're doing. It's like the commanders when they drafted Chase Young and they are already got rid of him. He was supposed to be a part of that big defensive line. They were wrong. The, the Patriots, man, that is one of the worst. They might be the worst team that drafts in the NFL. And they blame Bill Belichick for that, and that's just going to continue. And now they got Gerard Mayo as the head coach. His head's going to explode from the fucking uh, – the, 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 what, you know, linebackers hit their head so many times, their head expands, the CTE. That's what's going to happen to him. And I hate to be so cynical about that, but that's what it looks like. All I can do is judge what I see. They're going to bring in Drake May, who could have a lot of talent. I think he's going to be good. I think he has a lot of chance to be good. Like I said, Jaden Daniels and him could be great. But you don't have a good receiving group. You used to be known to draft offensive linemen well, and you haven't done that recently. Your running back core is in shambles. Your defense, that used to be your strong suit. And on any given Sunday, I guess, yeah. I mean, that probably is the Patriots' strong suit, if there is one. But that defense is weak. It's disgustingly weak on so many levels. They don't even know what they're doing anymore. And they put Gerard Mayo as the head coach, and they think he's going to figure it out? Oh, my Oh my God. All they needed, All they needed was to get a new GM. But the Patriots, that owner, Robert Kraft, is so gung-ho on his favorite people that he's just going to fucking keep letting whatever's happening happen and blame even Bill Belichick for it. It is disgusting. But, yeah, go draft another quarterback. Like you did. And, and I was behind the – you know what? It's not even Mac Jones. See, this is, the, this is where I have a problem. Mac Jones can still be molded into a quarterback. The Patriots are just so bad. They made him look so bad that he, they might even drive him out of the league. That's how bad it is. Mac Jones, he stood in the pocket. He wasn't afraid to take a hit. He had accuracy on the football. His arm strength was his only issue, but he was a good quarterback. And the Patriots ruined him to a point where teams don't even want to look at him. That's how bad the Patriots are. Next up, number four, the Cardinals. Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State, six foot four. Bigger than his father. Unbelievable. He can do everything. And he could help. He's going to help any team he goes to. He's going to help the Cardinals to some capacity. But the problem is, is the and they're behind Kyler Murray. I get that. They want to get him a weapon and it's cool. But you guys, you win in the trenches. You win physically. And the Cardinals don't have that. Their offensive line sucks complete ass. Their defensive line sucks complete ass. Their secondary and linebacking core sucks complete ass. And the rest of their receiving core beyond possibly Marvin Harrison Jr. sucks complete ass. They get rid of Hollywood Brown and not resign him, 
when he could have been perfectly matched with Marvin Harrison. Six foot four, five nine, take the top off the defense. Marvin Harrison goes over the middle. Oh, but Cardinals don't think that way. So they're just going to overcompensate, get Marvin Harrison to sell tickets, and they're going to lose their ass anyway. You're not going to outscore all the teams every week. It's not going to happen. And good luck getting by the 49ers and some of those other juggernauts in the NFC because they ain't going to let it happen. As good as Marvin Harrison Jr. is, they're not going to let him tear up a game and catch three touchdowns every week. So, unfortunately, it's going to be one of those situations. And Kyler Murray could even get hurt again. I'm glad I'm not a Cardinals fan. Next pick, we got the Vikings with a trade up with the Chargers, and they're going to take J.J. McCarthy, quarterback Michigan. I completely disagree with this. Not that the sense that Mel Kuyper doesn't think this is going to happen because it very well could. I disagree with the Vikings in the sense that they're drafting a quarterback that's going to be a bust. And I look at Joe Burrow, I look at some of these – like Joe Burrow could very well be out of the league in a couple of years because of injuries. He, he has – unfortunately, he's built like a boy – when this is a man's league. He was gifted with a hell of an arm, but he is too much like a boy. And J.J. McCarthy is that for me. I I don't think he's going to make it in the NFL. And he's never never stepped up in big games. So the Vikings, I, I think, are in for a bad turn. I really do. And we're even hearing about Justin Jefferson being traded. But I think that just shows you the, uh, I guess you could say, the inability to make a decision by the Vikings. This is going to be bad, but I understand why Kuyper's doing this. But you know what I do love? Is the Chargers making that trade, because then they can get better. But we'll leave it at that. Let's get to number six, the Giants. This has been constant in all of Mel Kuyper's drafts. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver out of LSU, he is amazing put up a lot of stats really good player but it's just a receiver when the rest of your team is terrible secondary linebacking core terrible your d-line probably your strongest suit offensive line oh my god and shambles saquon's not there no more you got no number two receiver and you want to take a number one receiver because you need it the most but that means you're backing daniel jones So, man, all I can say, though, is it makes sense for them to go receiver, but it's going to be a long time before the Giants are relevant again. A long time. And number seven, finally, a pick that I can get a little excited about. The Titans draft Joe Alt, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. This is great because, in my opinion, I just want Ryan Tannehill back in the lineup. I want them to take an offensive lineman, get that right, make that offensive line good, get a couple big receivers, make sure you find a running back, and you can be better again. But the problem is is that the Titans are in such a rebuild mode that there's no one fix. But I do feel more optimistic about the Titans because in recent years, like in the last five to ten years, they actually haven't drafted bad. Whereas like the Giants and the Cardinals and the Patriots, some of these teams have been just so fucking bad. I can't even get behind them. The Titans, if they start on the offensive line and know what they need to do, this could be great. You know, they could make it work. They get offensive linemen, maybe later in the draft, get a running back that they think could be really good and make this work. So I'm cool with that. I am cool, but they got a lot of work to do, no doubt. But at least they know what they're doing. Falcons, next up at number eight, Dallas Turner, outside linebacker, Alabama. I love this. I love this because I I hope that this happens because if the Falcons go offense or do something stupid, I'm just going to be like, wow, same old Falcons. But if they start building up that front seven, like I, you guys have seen it. If you watch my videos, I've been begging the Falcons to build up that front seven for years, and they haven't done it. This Dallas Turner, he can sack. He can cover a little bit running back on the outside. He can, you know, obviously stop the running back. There's a lot of things he can do for you. He's one of the best defensive players coming out this year. That's what they need to do. Something like that. 
if they go in any other direction, I'm just going to feel bad about it. Kirk Cousins is there. You're going to have London. You're going to have Kyle Pitts. You got a good running back core. Your offensive line's not bad, but you got to build up that defense. If they do not go defense with that pick, I'm going to be utterly disappointed. Next up, we got the Bears on the board again. Rome Odunzie, wide receiver out of Washington. Makes sense. If you're going to draft Caleb Williams, you got to give him a weapon that's not going to get hurt like Keenan Allen, right? So it's cool. You're going to have a really good receiving core and potentially, possibly, hopefully, a good quarterback. But the O-line, the running back core, the defense, all these things are going to be a problem. And it's just going to snowball and it's going to make everything bad. And then Caleb Williams, like I said, he doesn't step up when it counts the most. And that's something you can't teach. If somebody's going to get nervous in big moments, like if you give an oral presentation, and guys, by the way, I did four years of college. I went to Morrisville State College. I did presentations in front of a multi-million dollar reality company. That's good. I don't share much about myself, but I'll share that. But if people get nervous in front of adversity, like Caleb Williams did in college, you're not going to make it. So great, draft that. But see, this just gets back to what I was saying. The Bears should have kept Justin Fields, and they should have used these picks to get offensive line, maybe even Marvin Harrison. They just, oh, my God, dude, like I'm just realizing this now. You could have put Marvin Harrison with Justin Fields. That would, wow. I mean, I, I don't know. I think that would have been sexy as fuck, but whatever. Let's move on now. Number 10, Jets. Rock Bowers, tight end, Georgia. It makes sense if you think Aaron Rodgers is going to be there because you're giving him a safety blanket with Garrett Wilson on the outside. You're going to make it look good and it's going to make him more comfortable. But I don't know. If I was them, I'm going to go with the next pick because I'm going to transition right now, right away. Because I think Aaron Rodgers is going to get hurt again this year and the Jets are going to be shit out of luck. But what I would do, because I'm going to go to number 11 right now with the Chargers in that trade, J.C. Lathan, offensive tackle out of Alabama. That's who the Jets should take if they're serious about building a team. Because, guys, I mean, like we already saw Kyle Pitts get drafted a couple of years ago. And that didn't work out too good. I mean, he's not bad, but was it really worth a top pick? And they're saying the Jets at 10 are going to take a tight end. I know Brock Bowers is good, but if he's not Gronkowski, you don't take a tight end in the top 10. You're stupid for doing that. You take the best offensive lineman or somebody else, regardless. But at 11 with the Chargers, J.C. Lathan, that makes sense. Protect your investment with Herbert. I absolutely love this. We're on to number 12 now, the Broncos. Cornerback Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. So with the Broncos, this makes sense because they're not going to get the offense right this year 100%. They're not going to be able to have a future Hall of Famer at quarterback. So build up your defense, get the best player possible, and make it work. So I get this because the Broncos offensive line is pretty good. They can get a running back later in the draft. Their receiving core isn't too bad, although they did lose. It was Jerry Judy, right, to the Browns. So they're going to have to figure that out too. And their defense, unfortunately, there's a lot they got to figure out. So – if they want to get the best player off the board, I think that's what Mel Kuyper is doing here. The best corner, one of the best corners, it makes sense. It's a passing league. If you got to start somewhere when you got so many things wrong, it makes sense. But, man, I, the Broncos got a lot of work to do. I don't even know where to begin. 13, Raiders. Telesi Huaga, offensive tackle, Oregon State. Yeah, it makes sense generally because 
the Raiders are one of those teams that have a lot of issues too on so many levels. And if you're going to go forward with Derek Carr, if that's what you're going to do, and Devontae Adams, and you, you have a pass rush already in place with Crosby and company, I guess the best way to go about it is to address your offensive line to make sure Derek Carr can stay upright and deliver that football. I got no complaints. And you guys see how I'm thinking about this on the fly. I didn't pre-plan this video. Saints, Alu Fashionawu, offensive tackle, Penn State. That makes sense. There's a lot of directions that the Saints could go in, receiver, defensive line, offensive line. But this makes sense. Just try to protect your quarterback for what you're going forward into the season and hope for the best. That's it. Because the Saints are one of those organizations for me that don't know what they're doing. They really don't. But at least that makes sense. Colts at 15. Taryn. Terrian Arnold, cornerback out of Alabama. Yeah, that makes sense. Again, it's a passing league. You got to start somewhere, and corner would be good for them to, to you know, beef up their defense. If they think he can be a number one corner on the outside, this makes complete sense. Complete sense. But there's so many things with the Colts, like Anthony Richardson. We don't even know if he's going to be healthy. We don't even know if Jonathan Taylor can stay healthy. This offensive line hasn't been hyped up into what it's been. The receiving core, Jesus Christ. People like, I, I listen to Colts fans and they're like, Michael Pittman is so great. He's the number one. I'm like, no, nah, dude, he's the number two. And you guys don't really have anybody that can take over games. So I get it passing league. That's why the Colts would go in that direction if I'm talking to Mel Kiper personally. But damn. If I was the Colts, and I knew Anthony Richardson would be there. I would trade up. Sometimes you got to do something to spice things up. Trade up and get Marvin Harrison or do something crazy like that. Because at least you can sell tickets and ball out a little bit. Like Anthony Richardson to Marvin Harrison. It's kind of, kind of sounds sexy. But I don't know. Maybe the Colts are just fucked. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of, what I, kind of what I'm getting at here. So next up, we got Seahawks at 16. Troy Fontenu, guard out of Washington, makes sense. You're not going to get a quarterback. You're going to be going forward with Geno Smith most likely. You're going to have to protect him and try to get run lanes open for Ken Walker at running back. I like that. Jaguar, 17. Cooper DeJean, cornerback out of Iowa, makes sense. If there was one thing that I noticed about the Jaguars last year, it was the defense other than Josh Allen up front. So that makes sense. I can't even complain about it. Uh, honestly, though, the one thing about Jacksonville that I'm skeptical on is Trevor Lawrence and that whole offense. I just don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. I don't think it's going to be good. So building up the defense because they have to believe in them is okay. But damn, man. Trevor Lawrence is a pussy. And that just gets back into what I was talking about earlier, like Caleb Williams with the pink fingernails, Trevor Lawrence with the long golden brown hair. I mean, you know, I mean, come on, man. Like, what, what do you, when you got long hair like that, you want to look like the fucking blonde girl? You want like a man to grab that and start humping you? Like, dude, what the fuck, man? I'm getting sick of this shit sometimes. Like, I have to talk about this when I'm trying to talk about football when they got prima donnas in the NFL because it's a show instead of real football. I'm get, I, I want to puke right now. Number 18, the Bengals. Byron Murphy, the second defensive tackle. So, yeah, that makes sense. They lose DJ Reader. They replace him with Byron Murphy. Mel Kuyper, you got it right. You're cool because the offense is already cool. All line. Um, they can draft a running back in the second or third round. You got T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow. That's cool with me. DT to replace DJ Reader. Love that. Love when it fits. I love when it makes sense. Easy to talk about. Number 19, the Rams. Leitu Latu, outside linebacker, UCLA. Makes sense. The Rams have got to get better in a lot of areas. They lose Aaron Donald to retirement. But 
This is a guy that could come in on the outside and get 10 to 15 sacks and stop the run. Now, if he does that, I don't know. I mean, the college film shows that he has that potential, but this makes sense. This is cool. The offense for the Rams are already set in place. I mean, more or less, you know, in terms of what they need. They've, I mean, one of the things that I want to give credit to for the Rams, and again, guys, I'm going off the fly here. I'm having fun with this. That offensive line, they have done a great job with that. The, it, the Patriots used to be like that in terms of finding offensive linemen, and the Rams have done a wonderful job of finding low-key offensive talent. That is something that cannot be replaced. And that is what is going to keep the Rams relevant for many years because they can do that. At 20, we got the Steelers. Graham Barton, center guard out of Duke. Yeah, that makes sense. The Steelers' offensive line has always been an issue for me. And you got Russell Wilson and you got Justin Fields. Whether or not they trade Justin Fields or not, because I think, again, I think that's something that could happen. I think if the right situation comes up, they could trade Justin Fields for a first rounder or even potentially a future first rounder or even potentially a future second rounder or even potentially a third rounder and a future second. There is a lot of things that the Steelers could do here because Russell Wilson is their guy. And you got Najee Harris, you got Warren at running back. So bringing in Graham Barton, who can maul open lines for them and blast open run lanes, that makes sense. So I won't disagree with Mel Kuyper there. I, I absolutely love this. They got dynamic receivers, good tight end group with Firemuth. So make that run game good as possible for Russell. And that's what I think could happen. But again, don't be surprised in the first round or second round if we don't see a Justin Fields trade again. Again, I know it sounds sexy. They put Russell at number three. They put Justin Fields at number two. They might try to groom him. But, man, if if a team offers you a package of draft picks, how can you not trade Justin Fields? And then just say, okay, we'll just wait till the next draft class or two because Russell Wilson could be here for two, three years. And then at that point, the Steelers could be in play for another quarterback. It's going to be interesting to see how they play that. Definitely interesting. Number 21, the Dolphins, Jared Verse, defensive end, Florida State. Makes sense. Uh, they've had the, the Dolphins have had a lot of defensive linemen get hurt recently. And they need somebody that they can count on week in and week out to get to the quarterback. It's been a big problem for them. The offense is already set. I mean, Waddle, Tyreek Hill, they're going with Tua. So there's nothing that we have to question about that offensive side. That's set. The defensive side is where they need to have help. And if they can get somebody in there that can get 10 and a half plus sacks a year, that's going to help that team immensely because then it's going to get overwhelming for the opposing team. They're going to be getting sacked left and right. And then you're going to have Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill balling all over you. You're going to get tired and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. I love that pick by Miami. That's going to go great. And let me just look up right now because I want to make sure, because I know I just want to, because, you know, there's a lot of stuff we talk about here, guys. So, yeah, Jalen Phillips. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I got the name right. So, Jalen Phillips and Jared Verse together, because Jalen Phillips is getting healthy, and he's nasty. Dolphins know what they're doing. They might have a little bit of issue at quarterback, but they know what they're doing. 22, the Eagles. Nate Wiggins, quarterback out of Clemson, makes complete sense. They weren't happy with, you know, obviously Slayton and uh, Bradbury. Uh, particularly Slayton's getting older. So this makes sense because the Eagles technically, from what we know, okay, they got a good offensive line. They got two dynamic receivers that are pretty young. I mean, for the most part, you know, they got a good running back core, a quarterback that can scramble and do all the plays from that. So that's cool. Build up your defense. I'm 100% behind that. 23, the Chargers in that trade, they're going to get Xavier Worthy wide receiver out of Texas. Honestly, Kuiper, I don't like this. A no-name at receiver? 
no. I think I think the Chargers could do better than this. They can go get a Donnie Mitchell, somebody else that's better on the board right now. Even Brian Thomas Jr. I would not take Xavier Worthy. No, but I'm I'm for the Chargers getting a weapon, but not that weapon. Packers 25, Amarius Mims, offensive tackle, Georgia. Makes sense. I mean, Bakatiari is just, he ain't got it no more. And you got to protect Jordan Love. Love it. I don't even have to go any further than that. That Packers defense is sick. It's nasty. Jordan Love drops dimes. Packers are going to be good next year. Build up that O-line. Maybe get a receiver in the second round or third round just to beef it up a little bit. It's going to be sexy as fuck. 26, Buccaneers, Chop Robinson, off outside linebacker, Penn State. Makes sense. Makes sense. That front seven for the Buccaneers has gotten more and more older, depleted. I like it in that terms. I, I honestly don't think there's any other way they can go. I mean, I, I do think the Buccaneers need a lot, but front seven, that wins you games. I'm cool with that. That's a good start for what they have to do. At 27, we got the Cardinals back on the board again. Defensive lineman out of Missouri. Well, I couldn't agree more with this pick, Kuiper. You're, you're a smart son of a bitch, and this makes sense. Get somebody up front that can disrupt and stop the run and be athletic. I get it, because that is a position that the Cardinals desperately need. That defense, that defense like they just don't know how to build it. But that would at least make sense. Bring a keystone player up front in the interior that can make it happen. Or actually, he can play anywhere on the line, so that's good. Bills at 28, Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, LSU. I disagree with this completely. I I, I don't think the Bills are going to go Brian Thomas. I know he's 6'3", and I know it sounds good, but if the Bills do not trade up for a receiver – they're going to take a pass rusher because that was their biggest fall last year. The problem when they played the Bengals a couple of years ago and the problem when they played the Chiefs this year is because they can't get to the quarterback on the outside. Von Miller is old. Greg Russo doesn't stat pack with the sacks. You need somebody that can get to Mahomes and get to Joe Burrow. So at this point, late in the draft, I'm just thinking, if the Bills don't trade up to get a receiver that, that they see that could be an impact player, they're definitely, definitely going to go defensive end. I think that's what's going to happen. I don't like this Brian Thomas pick at all. I don't know where that's coming from, but I don't like it. And honestly, the Bills could easily wait in the second round and get a receiver too. Next up, and honestly, no, okay, here's the thing. the Okay, this is what Kuyper's got. Okay, so now 28 with the Bills, Brian Thomas, and then he's got 29 with the Lions, a Donnie Mitchell who's nasty. Do you really think the Bills are going to let a Donnie Mitchell go to the Lions? That's disgusting. Dude, Brian Thomas ain't going to do jack shit at the NFL level. This is disrespect by the Buffalo Bills from Mel Kuyper, but whatever. I mean, the Lions bringing in another receiver to just bolster what they already have because they got a great offensive line. They have a decent defense. I'm sure the rest of the draft, the, the Lions are going to address their defense in a lot of different ways. And there is a lot of different ways they can address it, particularly linebacking for secondary. That's all cool. But first round for the Lions and Bills, that's going to be like who they want at receiver and it makes sense. Because both of these teams needed an extra option to go out there and catch the football. So I'm just saying – like, I would be shocked if the Bills took Brian Thomas over a Donnie Mitchell. One of my favorite players in the draft, coming off at number 30, the Ravens, Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama. That's nasty. That's going to fit right into what the Ravens do because they're going to be pounding it with Derrick Henry, play action, killing clock, putting up points. And then when the other team comes on the field, they're going to have to deal with a stout defense that can't throw the football. Perfect pick, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Next up, 31, 49ers, Roger Rosengarten, offensive tackle out of Washington. Absolutely. I don't even need to go into depth for this. The 49ers 
that offensive line has unfortunately been depleted the last couple of years. So I think this will replace that and they can get back to what they're doing. Brock Purdy back there with no pressure. They can run it if they want. They can throw it. They can do read option and he won't be under any pressure. Perfect pick. And we'll cap it off with 32, the Chiefs, Xavier Leggett, wide receiver, South Carolina. This is weird for me. I think the Chiefs are going to go defense because they missed out because they lost the Jerry Sneed. Kuiper, this is the one pick. Okay, this is awesome. Git gets to critique Mel Kuiper. The one pick that I do not agree with you on is your last pick out of the first round, the Chiefs drafting a wide receiver. No, man, they already got Hollywood Brown. They already got all these other guys. Why, why in the world would they draft a receiver? They could get one in the second or third round. It's a deep class for receiver. The Chiefs don't need that. I think the Chiefs, if anything, like I said, need a corner because they lost Snead. They can get the best corner left here on the board. So, but that's it. Uh, Chiefs are going to be balling, though, guys. So let me just go through this again. I'm going to do it real quick for you guys. Chiefs are going to be balling. They'll be in the playoffs. 49ers are going to be balling. They're going to be in the playoffs. Ravens, despite my discrepancies they're going to be in the playoffs regardless lions going to be in the playoffs bill's going to be in the playoffs cardinals are going to be shit out of luck buccaneers going to be shit out of luck packers going to be in some kind of a playoff capacity because they're building the team the right way cowboys they'll squeak in but it ain't going to be pretty chargers honestly guys i don't know yet i don't know what's going to happen with harbaugh i don't know how he's going to run this team but if they make good moves in the draft and i see some stability that I think they could possibly win the division or be a wild card team. It's possible, but I got questions about the Chargers. Eagles, obviously, like I said, you know, they're going to make it. We talked about that earlier, but they're a good team. Um, Dolphins, they'll get some capacity in the wild card because they just got too much firepower with those receivers. And it's just going to be impossible for teams to stop week in and week out. Steelers, no. The AFC is tough. I don't know how they think Russell Wilson's automatically going to become this great quarterback. I think it could be controlled. I think some stuff can work. But honestly, guys, sometimes it just comes down to raw talent. And the Steelers don't have that. They don't have a fully well-built team. So let me make sure we're at the right spot here. Rams, yeah, they're going to be in the playoffs. Either they win the division, they'll be a wild card. Uh, that is a well-constructed team. They know how to draft. Bengals, as long as Joe Burrow's healthy, they're going to be ripping it. They're going to be in the playoffs one way or another. Jaguars, no, nah, guys, they're going to fade. I don't believe in Trevor Lawrence, and I don't believe in what they're doing there as a team. I think the Jaguars could be one of the biggest disappointments in 2024-2025. Seahawks, that's another team that's going to be a big disappointment. You got rid of the coach. You got rid of the coach, Pete Carroll. That made your team better than what it was. He made Geno Smith better than what it was. He put those de that defensive players and th that defense in good situations. He made those receivers get open. I'm telling you right now, man, the Seahawks are going to take a step back. They made a mistake getting rid of Pete Carroll, blaming him for that. The Colts, they're going to be bad guys. They don't know what they're doing. Anthony Richardson could get hurt again. The offensive line's getting older, falling apart. That receiving core is absolutely terrible. The defense, unfortunately, linebacking core and secondary are absolutely terrible. Colts are going to have a rough season. Saints, rough season too, just simply because they don't know how to build a team. Raiders, same thing. Rough season because they don't know how to build a team in general. I don't need to go into every aspect of it. I'm not going to pull up rosters and talk about offensive linemen in front of you guys at this point. They just don't know what they're doing. The Broncos, man, kind of the same thing. They get one thing right, but then they don't get the other thing right. It just doesn't make sense. They're just they're going to have a rough season. They might win seven, eight games. And you know what? They'll probably be one of the teams that fuck you on one of your bets where you're like, oh, yeah, this team's going to like, oh, my God. We've got the Buffalo Bills play, playing the Denver Broncos. They're only minus four, and you're going to lose all your money because you take because you take the Broncos. Uh, Chargers, I'm actually optimistic about that. If they make the right moves, if they build up that offensive line and they get weapons for Herbert later on, draft a couple defensive players, 
The Chargers can be very good. The Jets, I don't like it because they have no contingency plan behind Aaron Rodgers. If Aaron Rodgers gets hurt, which he probably will at some point, whether it's week one, like last year, or week six, it don't matter. It just doesn't matter. That Without Aaron Rodgers being fully healthy, it's not going to make a difference. The Bears, we already said. Honestly, when they got rid of Justin Fields, I knew they were doomed. There's nothing they can do to right this ship in one year. Regardless of what they draft this year, the Bears are only going to win four to six games best. Falcons at number eight. I absolutely love the addition of Kirk Cousins. I like where they're going, but that defense is just so bad that I think it's going to crumble them this year. So maybe next year, if they, you know, they do draft Dallas Turner this year on an outside linebacker, and next year they're focused on building up the defense with Kirk Cousins, they could probably make a push. But unfortunately, right now, the defense just needs so much work on so many levels. It's just not going to matter. Titans, I, like I said, I love the pick by Mel Kiper with Joe All at offensive tackle. It's amazing. It's awesome. That would help the offensive line. Tannehill can stand back there and sling it to, to Burks, whoever else at receiver. But again, uh, it just gets down to the fact that the Titans have so many issues because they still need to complete an entire offensive line, which they don't have. They don't have a legit running back. The receiving core is a flux, and the defense isn't what it used to be. So unfortunately for the Titans, even though Joe Alt would be an amazing pick at left tackle, it's just not going to be enough for this year. This draft, even if they had, even if they hit on every pick this year, it's not going to be enough. Giants, ton of issues. I, I, I'm not even going to talk about it. They need so much. And like I said, Brian Dable's probably going to get blamed for it and he'll get fired and the Giants are going to suck for the next 15 years. The Vikings, they're going to suck a long time, especially if they draft J.J. McCarthy. That's the wrong pick at quarterback. And Justin Jefferson already wants out of there. The defense isn't very good on any level. So they're in for a rough ride. Cardinals in for a completely rough ride. Yeah, great. Draft Marvin Harrison Jr. to people to buy tickets, but you're still going to lose. Patriots don't know what they're doing. They have absolutely no clue. They can't build a team. This is just a mess. Commanders, same thing. They can't build anything. And the Bears, again, same thing. Too many issues. They're not winning in the trenches. It's not going to help them. So with that, guys, I think we did it. This was an ultimate podcast. I hope you guys got some laughs out of it, but I also hope you got informed about some stuff too. Because again, when we make those bets, when we start looking at these teams, you guys got to know where they're at. And then after you know where they're at, you can fool Vegas because Vegas is going to play on those temptations. And they're going to think, well, this team sucks. So we're going to give them this amount of points against this team. And they won't expect that to happen. We can do it. We can figure it out. And I will be here in September for you guys to help figure that out. Last story that I want to tell you guys to make you laugh because that's, I, I love, I love telling stories and making people laugh about shit. I was at the mall the other day. I'm not a swinger. I don't like to have two, three dudes or one guy and three women. I, I don't like you guys. And I know a lot of people might say, well, you, it's cool to have one guy and, and two or three women, you know, a menage a trois, or whatever the fuck they call it. I don't like that. I like one woman, one-on-one, -on -one, passionate, boom. So anyway, I'm at, I'm at the mall, and I see these wannabe superstar players in college. They're all wearing their jerseys and everything. And they got this one girl that looks kind of cute, but not, you know, she ain't she all right. But they're all, like, grabbing her ass. And it's like, dude, like, you only scored six points in the last game that you lost. And you think you're balling out? Like, you're going to end up selling car insurance or at Walmart in a few years, and you're pinching a girl's ass, and you think you're balling out? This society has gone to shit, dude. Like, I'm not a swinger. I'm not, like, but my God, dude. I mean, Jesus. You, you think you're balling out because you scored two points and you got a blue jersey on from Whitesboro and you think you're cool. 
all I know is, is that this society, sometimes I feel like it's going to hell in a handbasket, but it, who am I to judge? I'm one man. I can't change anything, but I guarantee you one thing, the morals and the uh, fabricated life that people think they should live are a complete fantasy and people are buying into it. And I cannot stand when I think, when I see people that think they're ballers when they never did anything in their life. It is sad. It is very, very sad. I'm not even going to brag about my accomplishments. I could. I'm not going to do it. But it's just crazy that somebody that's in college that hasn't accomplished absolutely anything, that doesn't even realize that they're getting scammed for money, pinching a slut's ass, thinks that they're ball. They're ball. <laughs> Whatever, guys. That's it. Hope you had a laugh. Hope you had a good time.